Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. I'm joined by Fabrizio Romano as we go through all the latest Manchester United transfer news. How are you doing Fabrizio? Well my friend, all good, all good. Thank you as always. Always a pleasure to be here. Good, good. Um, we've had, you know, it's funny the international the, the international break is on now. The transfer window has been closed a few weeks, but there are actually every time we get you on, there seems to be stories coming out. And um, <laughs> I want to start off talking about striker situations. Um, we had, um, um, well, let's start off about Griezmann because there was a story that came out from um, a Spanish journalist who I think is uh, works for the Athletic, and then I think Mundo Deportivo are talking about Griezmann as well and Manchester United. Now, I wouldn't normally take much notice of Spanish reports, but it is coming from an athletic journalist who's based out in Spain as well. Um, I think his name's Corrigan or something like that. Um, are Manchester United interested in Griezmann? Is that a deal that Man United might try and do in, in January if he's up at Atletico Madrid? I think it's more um, the Spanish clubs trying to push the situation of Griezmann because they need to resolve the story of Griezmann. It's a, it's a crazy situation. We know this the story of the percentage of the games he has to play uh, if Atletico Madrid uh, will will trigger the the buy option at the end of the season. So it's a really complicated situation between Atletico Madrid and Barcelona. And so it makes sense for them to have rumors around about about Griezmann. But at the same point, from what I'm told, the player is 100% on Atletico, focused on Atletico Madrid. Uh, Atletico Madrid are happy with him. So I think it's nothing uh, imminent or close or already advanced. At the moment, he's 100% focused on, on Atletico and also for Manchester United to go for that kind of player. Fantastic player, but not kind of striker they, they need. Uh, kind of striker for, for present and future, different kind of skills. So with the respect of Chris, to, to Griezmann, but I think it's something different what they're looking for for, for present and future. So at the moment, I don't see anything advanced into this story of Griezmann to, to Man United. It could be something discussed, you know, with intermediate with agents but not something advanced yeah and his wages are, are, are very big i think he was on was it something like seven hundred and fifty thousand euros a week at barcelona and he's 31 as well so it'd be a very very big yes. deal for united to do um, yes no this, his salary is a point his salary is a point but also it's important to mention that atletico madrid and barcelona are in direct contact to find a solution and maybe to find an agreement for Atletico Madrid to anticipate the payment, to reach an, an agreement and resolve this Griezmann situation. So I don't see anything imminent, honestly, with Man United. Then if they will broke this deal, Atletico Madrid and Barcelona, it could be an option for many clubs. But as of now, it's not something close or, or imminent. Uh, I want to stay with the, the attacking situation because there's no doubt that Manchester United will need to bring an attacker in, whether it's in January or the summer. Uh, I don't, I'm sure you did see the sporting director at PSV, uh, Marcel Brand, was talking about how Manchester United had approached Cody Gakpo um, and maybe unsettled him a little bit, you know, because it was August time. Uh, he had a very good weekend. I, th I think he's uh, got a couple of goal involvements again and, and, and as part of a result. Do you think Manchester United could go back in for Gakpo in January or do you think he was maybe just a cheaper alternative to, if, to, if they didn't get Anthony? I will keep it open. I will keep it open because Manchester United and Gakpo had different approaches this summer. Uh, first of all, the relationship with these agents is, is very good because they are the same agents of Eric Ten Hag. And so the relationship with agents is a really important point. But uh, at one point of the summer, they were really thinking of both Gakpo and Anthony as concrete options, but they never made an official bid to PSV for, uh, for, for Gakpo. It was just a conversation with the agents, an agreement ready with the agents, because Gakpo, of course, were ready, was ready to say yes to my United, but their focus at one point was only on Anthony. So uh, at one point, they decided to go only for Anthony and not for, uh, for Cody Gakpo. So for January, I would keep everything open, not just with my United, but also with other English clubs, because on deadline day, Gakpo was one step away from joining Leeds. It was really, really close. They had a very important bid ready for PSV. They had an agreement with the player and then Luis Van Gaal changed the story by calling the player and telling him the best way is for you to stay at PSV till the World Cup and then to, to move later. So the story changed for Leeds, but Leeds will be back. Leeds are really interested in Gakpo and so they will try in January. May United at the moment are not negotiating for Gakpo. So I understand Marcel Brands when he says these clubs are interested and they move and then it's a problem on player side. But at the same point, I think it's absolutely normal when you're a top club to, to have many options in the list and to speak with many agents and with many players. So it's absolutely normal process. At the same point, I will keep it open for January and for next summer if he's not moving in January because he's a player who's in the list. He's appreciated by Eric Ten Hag. He's a very good opportunity with the price tag too. And so I will keep the situation absolutely open. But at the moment, it's not something that they are already discussing with PSB. And um, in relation to... Um other options Manchester United need to buy a striker and um, what 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 sort of players do you, can you see Manchester United 
potentially moving for. I mean, Victor Osman was mentioned in relation to Napoli, but he would be very expensive and probably a summer signing more than a January deal. Um, do you think that this is a, you know, Manchester United just got an open mind and they'll, they'll do some scouting or do you think there are certain players, options they may look at? I think they know that they can't miss. They can't miss because it was a mistake for Man United what happened last January. We still remember the words from Rolf Ragnick who said, and I think he was right. You had the Julian Alvarez available with the release clause. You had Dujan Vlaovic on the market. Uh, you had Luis Diaz on the market. So many big opportunities for a January market. And they decided to wait. And that was not a smart decision. So they can't do it again. They have to find the right opportunity if it's not January. Because January market, it always depends. I think this year also with the World Cup, maybe we can have a check on some players that maybe they've been not 100% convinced during the summer. For example, a player I love is Jonathan David from Lille, who's a young striker, he's scoring goals, he's a leader, he's a very good player. This summer he was available for 35, 40 million euros and many clubs decided to wait. But now with Canada, the World Cup could be the good opportunity for him to show again how good he is yeah. and then to be on the market in January. So it's about the opportunities in January. Uh, I think if they will have opportunities as Vlaovic and Alvarez last, last January, they have to be ready and they will try to be ready because for Eric Tanak, this is a really important point. He wants the club to be ready in case there will be opportunities in January. So this is a really important point uh, for uh, for him. And so, honestly, at the moment, I don't know who's going to be the striker, but I think they don't even know who's going to be the striker. They wanted Darwin Nunez this summer. He was the main target. Then the Arnautovic crazy story. But then at the end, there was not available a top striker at May United level. So in January, they will go for a striker only in case they will find the right one. Uh, but I think the World Cup will be a very important check to see if there will be some player around, as I mentioned, Jonathan David could be one, but many others to be ready for May United and ready to, do, to go for different kind of play. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because there was a, another story in the UK uh, yesterday saying that Ten Hag would like to be spending in January. I'm sure he'd like to spend every summer, because uh, every yes. transfer window, because the, he's got a lot of work to do. That, But the, the Glazers may say there's no money available, but from what you were saying there, that, that would probably be a mistake to just ignore the January transfer window because you want to spend in the summer. Yes, but, but I think this is absolutely normal. Uh, top clubs always want to spend in the summer. But then look at Liverpool. I always get the example of Liverpool, what they did last January. They had the plan to not sign any player in January and to move for Luis Diaz during the summer. Then when they saw that West Ham and Tottenham were trying for Luis Diaz in January, they decided in 48 hours to jump into it, to make a proposal and then to sign a really important player like Luis Diaz. So sometimes on the market you can plan, you can decide the strategy, but sometimes you have to react to the facts, you have to react to things happening on the market. And this was the case with Luis Diaz, for example, with Liverpool. And I think Eric Ten Hag, from what I'm told, also on, on Eric Ten Hag's side, he wants the club to be ready in case there will be opportunities. Then you never know, because the January market is not always the same. It's not like summer when everything is open. In January, yeah. it depends on the opportunities. It depends on the players. For example, you mentioned Victor Osimhen. I think he's never going to be available in January. He's so yeah. important player for Napoli. They are doing great in Serie A. Uh, probably they started very well in Champions League, so they have good chances to go uh, to the to the knockout stages in Champions League. So. I I don't see them selling Victor Osimhen in, in January. So it depends on the opportunities and which kind of player you will have available on the market. But if there will be a big opportunity for a player who is ready for Man United, what Eric Tanak wants is Man United to be ready to react and to sign that kind of players at the right moment. And not just say, OK, we're planning for next summer. We don't care about the January market. Because it's really important to be ready sometimes. As I mentioned last, last January, I think it was a big opportunity missed with, with Alvarez, with Vlaovic and many others. Yeah, I think you're right, Fabrizio, because like you say, if, if there isn't any player there, you can't moan about spending money on people who aren't good enough. But if the opportunities do come up, like you yes. say, maybe a player in the World Cup, then United do need to be ready. We've spoken about Ronaldo quite a lot over the last couple of years. And one thing we, we sort of agreed on is that when Ronaldo starts the season, he's very professional and he focuses on that. And then in the summer, he'll look at options. Uh, he's never moved in January. Um do you think that Ronaldo will be a United player for the season now or, or, or do you think we could see a first time January move for Ronaldo? Do you think that story is closed yet or is it still very open? No, I would keep it open, honestly. I would keep it open because it was open till the last day of the transfer window. So it's always yeah. been open for Cristiano Ronaldo. And when Jorge Mendes is moving to, to find solutions, you have to keep it open because it's one of the best agents in the world, one of the best players in the world. So it's absolutely normal to, to keep options open. Uh, then we have to see what happens with the, with the clubs because I think uh, as we mentioned during the summer it was really complicated to find the right solution for uh, for uh, for Cristiano Ronaldo but now for example Chelsea have a different manager uh, mm -hmm. at Bayern they are suffering in Bundesliga maybe because they don't have 
kind of striker who is helping them after having Lewandowski for many, many years. So, you know, many things can change. At the moment, I'm told that nothing is is advanced with any club. Nothing has changed around Cristiano Ronaldo. He's 100% focused on Man United. So this is important to clarify, as you mentioned. When the season starts, he's 100% ready to give his best. And this is going to be the case again for, for Man United. But it depends on January, on what happens with the other clubs. So I will keep the situation open. It doesn't mean that Cristiano is 100% leaving because it depends on the proposals. But I will keep it open because things change very fast in football. Uh, if you told me six months ago Thomas Tuchel will be fired, maybe I was not, I was not even able to, to trust this kind of reports. And then it happened. So also Nagelsmann. Look at Nagelsmann's situation. Now they are protecting him at Bayern. But at the same point, results in Bundesliga and Bundesliga are not at the best level. So there are many things that could change. As of now, nothing has changed around Cristiano, but I will keep it open for Jen. It's, it's, it is interesting because I think in the summer, I, I wanted Ronaldo to stay because I see his value. And I knew that if he did go to Chelsea or he did go to Bayern Munich, he would do a very good job there. And, and it was it's it's quite ironic that both those clubs now are probably thinking, mm, well, well, I think Chelsea would like Ronaldo. It was Tuchel who probably stopped that deal and yes. he's not there now. And and Bayern could do with that as well. It so was Tuchel. They could be it was Tuchel in 100%. It was Tuchel 100%. This is the reality. Tuchel didn't want Cristiano Ronaldo. It was very clear in July because Todd Bolli was tempted. Eh? Todd Bolli at the end of June was tempted by this opportunity. He had conversations with Jorge Mendes, but it was Thomas Tuchel in July to say no to Cristiano Ronaldo. And he was absolutely not intention to go to go for Cristiano. Now with Potter, I think they will go for different kind of projects, you know, because now they will have a new director and so they will try to sign some young player. But with Cristiano, never say never. I suppose it I suppose it would be easier. I mean, United won't want him to go in January anyway, but it'd be easier to let him go to Bayern than it would be to go to Chelsea, who of course. this season are going to probably be a direct rival for Manchester United for top also four. Also because Man United, for the world summer, they said... And this is this has to be respected because at the end was the reality. He's not for sale. They always yeah. say he's not for sale. He's untouchable. He's part of our project. And at the end, he stayed. So we have also to respect the position of Man United. And I think behind that not for sale was a clear message to Chelsea and English clubs that they had no intention to let Cristiano go to any English club. This was the message. So I agree with you on this. Um, there's two other positions that uh, have been spoken about that Manchester United are the sort of next phase signings for Ten Hag. We've spoken about the striker. I think the other two are right back in midfield. Um, there was actually a, a, a story of that Manchester United, if they'd had the money, they would have bought a right back. But obviously they bought Anthony and there was no money left. That's going to be an area that Manchester United really do look to strengthen in. Uh, Delo is a player that you've spoken to us about for, for many uh, many months and, and years, actually, saying what a good player he is. And he is doing really, really well. But we do need another right back. Who do you think was factored in as the target in the summer? A lot of people talked about Denzel Denfries. We spoke about him. And is that still a player that we could look at maybe in January or next summer? Because we will be buying a right back. I'm, I'm sure of that. Yes, and the final two, three days of the window, there was a serious possibility for Serginho Dest, as we mentioned. It was a serious yeah. chance, but then at the end, with Juan Bissaka staying, uh, they decided not to proceed for uh, for Dest. But it shows that they really wanted the right back. They wanted the right back, and in particular, Eric Ten Hag wanted the right back because he thinks that needs to create some competition in that position, as you mentioned. And we always mentioned here, Diogo Dalot is doing great. They are super happy with him. Eric Ten Hag is a big fan of Diogo, and I never had any doubt. But at the same point, they need the right back. For Dumfries, I would keep the situation open, not just for January, but for next summer. Why? Yeah. Because it's true that this summer Man United were interested, and also Chelsea, because at one point Chelsea in the conversations with Inter for Skriniar, for Dumfries, and before for Romero Lukaku had an interest in Dumfries. But both Man United and Chelsea received the same answer. The player was not 100% convinced to move because of the World Cup. Again, what happened with Timber, what happened with Gakpo, and in this case with Dumfries, is I go to Man United or I go to Chelsea and I have some competition from top players. At Inter, I'm a regular starter because Dumfries with Inter is untouchable. But moving to the Premier League for three, four months, maybe you're not playing as a starter, it could mean that you have a problem for the World Cup. So this is why Denzel Dumfries decided to stay. And Inter always wanted more than 25, 30 million euros to sell, to sell Dumfries. So it was not an easy deal. But it's a player who is in the list of many important clubs, May United, Chelsea. And so I would keep his name around for May United and for Chelsea, for both clubs. Then we will see what happens next next year because at the moment it's not even the case to, to negotiate. Uh, they are not negotiating for a new right back. But Dumfries is one of the players they are they're following and I'm sure there are others because May United want to sign a new right back and I think it will be one of the missions for, for summer or January 23. 
Yeah, and, and and as we've said many times before, it's about moving players on, isn't it? Um, Wan-Bissaka was a, a player I think we spoke about right at the start of June that was a player that United were open to yes. selling and he's still very much there and United do need to try and move some players on, um, which, I mean, do you, that that's probably... <laughs> We struggled to sell players in the summer. I mean, I don't think we'll be able to move players on in January. I can't think of a United player. Well, Donny van der Beek comes to mind. I mean, we both like Donny, but um, he's been injured. He's probably going to be back for the after the international break. You feel, Fabrizio, if he doesn't get some good game time before the World Cup, because he's not going to go to the World Cup, is he? That Donny may, in January think you know it's time to go but then it's interesting because Ten Hag knows him so well it's going to be so interesting to see what happens with Donny. Yes but I think Ten Hag is smart is a smart man not just a good manager and he knows that Danny uh, Don, Donny needs to play Donny needs mm. to play Donny needs to be important for the team so he wanted Donny to stay immediately when he arrived at Man United he immediately sent a clear message to the player to the agents and to all the people that he wanted Donny to stay and he trusts Donny but at the same point, I think now he will be back from the injury. I'm sure that Donny is an important player, as I always uh, stated, because I think he's a really, really good player. But at the same point, he needs to play. So to answer your question, I think if he's not playing regularly at May United till the World Cup or after the World Cup, of course, January, I think there, are, there is a chance for him maybe to go in, in January and to have another loan after the one at, at Everton last, last year. I think it's a possibility. I think it's a possibility because he wants to play. He needs to play. At the moment, he's focused on Man United. He wants to try to fight for his place at Man United with a manager like Eric Ten Hag who trusts him. But if it, this is not going to happen, I'm sure that for Donny there will be a chance to go on loan in January. I saw some reports about Inter. Uh, some Man United fans asking me and Inter fans about this Inter story, but Inter have six midfielders, so I don't see them signing Donny van der Beek. Makes no sense for them in, in January. But there could be other options in England, in Italy, uh, ready, because for Donny there are always clubs available. We say that with one Bissaka was not easy. For Don, it's really easy to find the club because there are many clubs interested. But at the moment, he's still focusing on Man United and fighting for his place at Man United. Yeah, that's the problem you have sometimes, isn't it? We had it with James Garner in the summer that, summer, that you can't sell Brandon Williams, Phil Jones, wan because pe- their wages are big and people don't want them. But you can sell Garner and Van der Beek and people like that because they might not be getting into United's team for whatever reason, but they are still players that everyone else looks at and goes, yeah, we'll give you money. And that's sometimes why these players get sold before the likes of uh, Phil Jones and stuff, because actually people will take a chance on them and, and, exactly. and, and they rate them. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And for example, with Gardner, they received many approaches this summer eh? with many, many clubs. It was not just Everton, but many, many clubs wanted him. So this is absolutely the case. And as you mentioned, this is a really important point, I think, also for January window to understand if May United will be able to, to sell some of these players or to offload some of these players. It's really important. With Juan Bissaka, they were desperate to find a solution, but not because they don't trust the player, but because they wanted to sign him right back. They wanted to create different kind of competition to, to Diego Dalot. So this is why they, they were trying to find a solution. Also, I saw some stories about Arias on a free, but it was, yeah. this was never the case for, for May United. If they will sign him right back in January or in December, it will be an important right back and we're back at top level for for my United, and so at the moment uh, we have to to wait and see what happens with Wan Bissak. Yeah, um, just go, finally we'll just talk about the midfield um, options in the midfield in January or in the summer. I suppose this Jude Bellingham's been mentioned a lot. He's a player that's not going anywhere until the summer, and the World Cup could inflate his price massively. I know Liverpool feel that that they could get him. I'm hearing about De Jong that he might now be signing a new contract at Barcelona. And then you've got options in January like Yuri Tillemans, who'll have a few months left on his contract. What what sort of target do you think Manchester United will be going for? Because they do sort of need a player that can help Eriksen out because he has been so good and he's probably the only player in the midfield who could do that job. I mean, we'd like Donny to do it, but if he doesn't, United probably will have to go and get somebody. Yes, but at the moment, I think for all these, all these names, it's not going to be... Easy uh, at all because Bellingham is not is not living in January as you mentioned. Frankie the Young at the moment he is hundred percent focused on Barca and they're happy with him and on how he's performing. So it's not easy. It's not easy in January to go for that kind of uh, of player. I think it's about the opportunities. Tillemans would be a fantastic opportunity, but it depends on the price because, for example, many clubs had the chance to sign him, not just Arsenal. But many clubs in the final days of the window, and they didn't want to spend 30, 35 million pounds on a player who is available on a free in a few months. So let's see what Leicester will decide in January. Also depends on the general situation on Leicester, because of course they are in danger. And so they need to be clear on what they want to do with uh, with Tillemans in January. 
But I think it's about the opportunity. Again, as we mentioned, for the striker, if Man United will find the right opportunity, they could be ready to do it. If not, I think in this case, the best way is to wait for the summer uh, and then to have an important player in that position because you mentioned Ericsson is great, but they need some other rotation, some other option available for uh, for Aiton Hag. Yeah, well, it's going to be very interesting, isn't it, Fabrizio? And with the World Cup and lots of clubs probably maybe in January going, we've got a really hard end to the season all these tournaments, we need a couple of players just to give us that push, which then <laughs> could generate a really exciting January transfer window, hopefully. It will be it will be really exciting, I'm sure. Also because after the World Cup, there is always excitement around some some players that are clubs tempted by possibilities around around the world. And so I'm sure that will be really exciting. Thank you as ever for coming on, Fabrizio. It's a real pleasure. We got through a lot and there's a lot to discuss there. So I really appreciate you coming on and uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you as always. It's a pleasure. See you soon and we speak. Ciao. Thank you, Fabrizio. Um, yeah, big shout out to uh, Fabrizio for coming on the show there and we'll speak to you on the next one.